Hi everybody, currently in the GDX Arc Toolkit. I decided to buy it as an early Christmas present to myself. It is a beautiful starting file for uh, VR development in Unreal Engine. So I decided to treat myself. But today we're gonna be going over this, which I just made. It is one of those old school puzzles where you have to make all of the lights green, which currently would be like, uh, we'll press down there, maybe up here. Okay, I solved it. I knew I could eventually. And we get a sound effect whenever it's solved. Uh, and today we're gonna be going over how to make this. So stay tuned and uh, while I've got you, please like, comment, and subscribe before the video. It really, really helps. We're on our way to a thousand, which I'm very excited for. So I'll see you at the tutorial. All right, so that was my version right here, but we're going to make a new version for the actual tutorial. And I'm just gonna put it right on this wall. And the cool part is, is that you're only going to need three blueprints. And one of them's not even really a blueprint, it's an interface. So first let's go ahead and right click, open up blueprint class. We'll make it an actor. And we're just going to call this BP tut for tutorial button. All right. And we're gonna make another blueprint class actor. And we're gonna go with BP tut brain. Now I'm gonna have a lot of puzzles in my game. So there's gonna be a lot of brains that are handling how the information's being figured out. But for this tutorial, we'll just leave it as BP Tut Brain and BP Tut Button. And the last but not least, we need to come into our right click menu, go to Blueprints, and select Interface. And we will keep it simple BI for Blueprint Interface underscore Tut. Let's open up that first because that's the easiest one to set up. All we have to do is right up here, new function wants to know the name. We are going to call it on off compile save done literally don't have to do anything else there now we can go into our let's do the button next we'll open up our button and we're going to add uh, for the sake of this tutorial i made like custom buttons but you can literally use anything so we're going to do it with a cylinder okay we'll call this button because it's the button uh we'll scale this down by locking it and putting it 0.2 and then we'll unlock it, and on the Z, we'll put it at 0.1. Just so it's a, I don't know, it's a button. <laughs> All right, for the sake of VR, we're going to have to let the button know that it can interact with the player. So we're going to go down to the collision, we're going to set it to custom, and then under object type, we're going to set it to VR interactable. I believe this is the same on the, the usual VR template, but it's definitely the case if you're using the GDXR template. This will make it that we can actually do things with the button. That's basically all we need for the button. So let's go ahead to our event graph. And actually, before we even do that, let's go ahead and click our BP tut button, go to our class settings, and then our interfaces, we can just go ahead and add our interface that we made, which was bi underscore tut. Yay, okay, so now we have our interface right here, on off. At the beginning, we would like to know whether or not the button is on or off, because it, when the puzzle is set up, it's going to start with different buttons on and different buttons off. So in order to get that, we're going to go to our variable, and we're going to make a new boolean that's just going to be called on or off. Okay, we'll drag that out, bring that into here. And we're just gonna get the answer to that. We're also going to make that awake since each button on the panel is an instance of this blueprint. So that way we can edit which ones start on and which ones start off. Anyway, we're just going to feed that value into a branch. Go ahead and attach that to event begin play. So that way it knows, you know, what it should look like at the beginning. We'll drag off of that. We'll do a set material of the button. Right, I completely, I totally forgot about this. We're actually also going to make materials. So we're going to come in here, make a new material, do MT tut on. Okay, and then we can just open that up, press three, hold down three and click, sorry. <laughs> hold down three and click, drag this onto the emissive color, and then set this, uh, this is on, so we'll do green. And it should show up there, perfect, it's green, yay! That all looks correct to me. All right, and then we can hit apply, save. Now that one's done. We can go back into our shelf and we can just duplicate this. We'll call this one off. Open up off and we'll just change the color to red. Cause red's an off color. It means off. Apply, save, and then we can close that one as well. So now back in our BP tutorial button blueprint, we can set the material to that MT tut on for true because on is true. 
we can just copy this and paste it, drag the false down to the other, the new material, and we'll make this empty uh, tut off. So now, no matter what the button is, here, I can even show you. We'll compile and save. We'll go back to the demo room. We'll grab our button. I'm gonna rotate it since I'm putting it on a wall. And we can real simply just hold down Alt, drag it out, drag it out. And now we have a three by three grid of buttons. And we can go through and I can be like, mm, this one's on, the, this one's on, uh, this one's on, sure. And now if I go ahead and just simulate, you'll see that the ones that I selected are green, the ones that I did not select are red. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Now is as good as a time as any to set up all of the different kinds of variables that we're going to need. So let's go ahead and add a new variable, and we're going to call this one uh, button left, okay? I'm going to grab the name and copy it, just so that way I can do this a little bit quicker. And we're going to set that as a BP tut button object reference. And we're also going to make that awake. Oh, we can duplicate, awesome, even better. So we're just going to hit control D on this then. And we're going to set this to right. And I'm just going to speed through this part because it's literally left, right, up and down. That's all that we need. Okay, and then we need one more variable, which is going to be our reference to our brain. So we'll duplicate this one more time because that just makes it a little bit easier. We'll do button brain, or let's just do brain. We'll search for our BP tut brain right here, object reference, and we want that to be awake as well because again, we're going to be specifying what brain we're using in order to solve the puzzle. All right, and now we just basically have to plug everything in. So we're going to go up to our button, right, our cylinder, add an on component begin overlap. Uh, from there, we'll do a do once. Then all we're going to do is grab one of our buttons, just get a reference to it, and then drag off and type on slash off, and we're going to find the by tut on off message. Uh, we're going to plug that in. Now, we want it to affect, again, the button to the top, bottom, left, and right. So we're gonna duplicate this four times, and then just replace each of these with the ones that we haven't set up yet. So here's right, get button, get button, get button. And then we'll just plug those back into the target. Because all of these are buttons, so we know that all of these have the target is by touch on them. Now for the sake of this puzzle, we also want to tell it to change our on off state for the button that we're currently on to the opposite of what it currently is. So we're going to get on or off. We're gonna plug that into a not statement and that's going to go into the on or off Boolean set. So we're just telling it to actually do that. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to take that into a branch where the condition is the current state of the on or off Boolean. And we're just gonna do the same exact thing that we did at the beginning. So we can honestly just come over here, grab these again and paste those back in. True makes it green, false makes it red. Okay, we're just about there now. We're going to grab our brain, bring that in, get brain, and we're going to message the on slash off for by tut. And we're going to do that regardless of which one of these fires. We're going to do a delay, because if you don't do a delay, whenever the button gets pressed, it'll press it like a million times really quickly. So you want it to just press once. And the delay of 0.2 seconds, perfectly fine. And then from there, we're just going to drag this back and reset the button real quick, just in case if you missed any parts here, this is the full string that we're building. And these are all the variables that we're using, as well as the interface that we have implemented. But we're not out of the woods yet for what the button needs to do, because we also need to make it that buttons are affected by other buttons whenever their adjacent buttons get pressed. I just said buttons too many times. Let's say ducks instead. No, let's not. <laughs> so we're going to make an event for on and off, which is actually right here, convenient. So now, whenever something triggers the on and off event that's being refer or referencing our button, it's going to fire off this event. What event do we want it to fire off? Basically the same thing that we just did, but singular. So basically everything except for the messaging that we sent out the first time, we're going to grab except for the delay. We're just gonna come down to that event and we're gonna fire this. Drag, boom. And there you go. That is everything that the button needs. We can compile and save. So then let's really, well, let's start working on the brain. So first off, let's just grab the brain, bring it in above 
everyone else, right? Just so we know that it's in the map already. And let's open up the blueprint. The brain doesn't need anything as far as graphics because it's just there to kind of mitigate the data and try to figure out whether or not we've succeeded. So we'll go over to the event graph, and this one's going to be a lot faster because it's just one line, basically. We can delete all the other events that they started out with because we're going to use our own custom event. But first we have to go to our class settings, and we have to make sure that we have our interface on this brain. So BI tut. There it is. So now we have our on-off interface, which is exactly what we want. Make sure that you compile and save uh, after you've added your interface. Otherwise, you won't be able to get this event on off. So now whenever the buttons send a message over to the brain, it's going to fire this event off. First thing we're going to do though is delay because if we don't add a delay here, uh, there's an exploit where people can win this puzzle without actually completing it correctly. So we'll add our delay. It doesn't have to be long at all. We're just going to make it 0.1. And then we're going to get all actors, all actors of class. And that class is going to be BP tut button. Okay, so now we have how many buttons we have. Ooh, and this is a really good point to remember <laughs> that we need two variables on this one. We're going to need, here, we'll call it a button count. And we're going to set that to an integer because it's a solid number. It's not like we have half of a button somewhere. I will duplicate this and we're going to call this one buttons active, which is going to figure out how many buttons are currently on. So step one's going to be figuring out how many buttons we have. So we'll get, or we'll grab the out actors and we'll get length and we'll go down to button count and we'll set the button count using that number. Just plug that in right here. And we're also going to set our buttons active to zero. By setting it to zero every single time this event gets called before we check to see if all of the buttons are on, then we can roll out accidentally adding more buttons than there are that are on. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So anyway, set button active to zero. And we're just gonna plug that in. We're not going to attach these. Make sure these are not attached. Don't be like me. Uh, and then we're just going to drag off here and we're going to, for each loop, and we're going to grab our actor array of our buttons and we're gonna plug that in here. And the cool thing about for each loops is that we can actually now mess with variables inside of each of these objects individually. So we'll drag off our array element, type on or off, make sure we're on BP tut button and we will get on or off. So this is just going to tell us whether or not the button has an on state or an off state on that variable. Then we can go to branch, set that as our condition. And if it's true, so we'll increment integer one to our buttons active. So we'll get our buttons active, plug it into here. And from there, we're going to have another branch. And the condition of this branch is going to be that we're going to also take our button count. So we're gonna get our button count and we're going to check to see if both of these numbers are equal. So is button active equal to button count? If it is, the condition is true, which means that the puzzle is done. All of them are on. So now you can literally plug anything into true. Does this open up a door? If it does, then you're going to send a message to the door saying open. Does this cause a sound to play? Does this cause an animation to start? Whatever you want it to do from this point forward, the rest is all up to you. And so we're gonna compile and save. So now that we've taken care of all of the coding we should have to do in blueprints for the game, that just leaves setting up all of the buttons in the actual game itself. The reason why this is such a cool setup is right now we have this, you know, three by three grid of buttons, but you could scale it to 50 by 50, 100 by 100, something ridiculous. 10 by 10 would probably be the max that I would wanna go just for the sake of your players. It doesn't matter how many buttons you bring in, or what you set them to, the puzzle will automatically update itself to work perfectly. So let's get it set up. All we have to do is go in and make sure that the, okay, so see this button, it doesn't have a button on its left, so we don't have to do anything. It does have a button on its right, so we'll select and we'll grab that button. It does not have a button above it, but it does have a button down, so we'll select the button below it. And then obviously there's the brain, so we'll select the brain, and that's it. Like, I'll do one more just to show you how easy it is. Middle button, this does have a button left. Okay, so button left. Uh, this does have a button right. Okay, so button right. Uh, this does not have a button above it because we're still in the top row, so we leave that one blank. Button down, we just select. 
the button below it. And then brain, well, it has a brain. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the blanks for all of the buttons that we have currently in this puzzle, and then uh, we'll be wrapping it up. Okay, that should do it. Now, naturally, once you have this set up, you want to go in and you want to test it because we want to make sure it's working. Always test what you make. Okay, and then all that that leaves is that we have to test it out. So let's go over and give it a go. All right. I set this up to be an extra easy one for me just for the sake of testing. So boop, boop, and final. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this tutorial has helped. Don't forget to subscribe as it really does help out the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now!